Hello there, Internet Magua here, and I got another Legends of Runeterra video for you guys today. And today we shall not let our memes be dreams, as we're going to showcase Westworld, which is a deck concept that I shared a while back, actually. I think this was at least a couple of months ago. Uh, it's a deck concept that was given to me by Ecop, uh, a player that I met through, uh, I believe I met him back in the Artifact days, I'm not really sure, but he shared this deck idea of utilizing a standalone base for uh, Assembly Bot with Heimer, Dinger, Lux as a champion shell. Now, one of the things about this deck is, unfortunately, standalone got brutally nerfed, so it went from three mana to four mana, which makes the card absolutely atrocious, right? Which is why we went from three copies to two i don't even know if we should be playing two copies of this card but i feel like this sort of strategy requires a strong buff like standalone to allow our uh, assembly bot to get a bit of a head start right because with standalone uh, we are turning our assembly bot into from a 1-1 one, one to a 5-5 five, five, because we're giving it plus 3 plus 3 and he's getting plus 1 plus 1 uh, from the spell itself. The idea of this deck is pretty straightforward. We have an assembly bot on the board. We start buffing it by chaining a bunch of spells onto it which include uh, the likes of Chain Vest which can allow us to give him tough. And then we apply Sumpworks map onto the bot and we just do elusive game plan but with extra steps, right? <laughs> the edgy cool way. To play the elusive archetype we uh, give the assembly bot uh, the elusive keyword and we start smacking our opponent uh, we have relentless pursuit which we could have as a two of in this deck honestly as we're able to threaten our opponent with multiple uh, attacks through uh, a rally effect that we can really use to exacerbate our stat gains on assembly bot right here we're also playing my fucking shady character a four mana one three that says uh as he's played pick a follower and then transform me into an exact copy of it so we can copy a fully buffed assembly bot even after we applied the map onto it and uh, just get some tremendous value for four mana and skip all the tedious you know spell chaining process to build up for uh this sort of uh you know high level of stat line right English. Anyways, we have uh, Heimerdinger and Lux as our champions, like I mentioned prior. We have a couple of progress days for card draw, two static shocks. We have a full set of succession, alongside Prismatic Barrier for protection. Obviously, Flash of Brilliance. This is a card that works brilliantly <laughs> with both Heimerdinger and Lux, as we can contribute for the level up of Lux with it and to generate final sparks. And we can get three mana turrets that are elusive for Heimerdinger, which gives us a pretty solid matchup against elusive decks in general, really. That's the beauty of playing a Heimerdinger deck. But this particular variant uh, is pretty, pretty cheeky and can actually do... it. I think it matches up better against uh, Darius decks than the likes of regular uh, Heimer Deer Control because we have the ability to potentially race them, right? Which is why I think Relentless Pursuit could... You could argue for a second Relentless Pursuit. If you guys are watching this and you know what card you would like to take out for it, let me know. I'm not exactly sure right now what I would take out for it, but probably standalone. <laughs> I still want to believe this card has a niche utility in a deck like this, but I'm not even sure if even even in a deck like this, it fits. And that's very, very sad for standalone. Not like I missed the card, don't get me wrong. I do not miss this degeneracy, uh, degeneracy basically with Fiora and Zed. Uh, on turn three really happy that's gone but man they could have they could have made it a four mana you know give plus four plus four something like that and i would have been fine with that to be completely honest uh regardless that is the deck list right there uh not a deck that i would recommend for you to climb ranked with uh it has it's unfortunately a little bit too slow for this meta. Uh, there's uh, a lot of fast shit with Darius that can outpace you more often than not. And then uh, hyper control decks can also be difficult to navigate around. Because we're not playing Ionia, we don't have Deny or Will of Ionia. So that just makes us very, very weak to those matchups potentially as well. But it is a deck that can put in a lot of work. And it can potentially beat any deck in the meta. It has a lot of snowball potential. And it's just funny as hell, man. I, I really want to share this strategy again. I haven't played Assembly Bot in a while. And I want to provide you guys with some more unique deck lists from, from here on out. Uh, I played a little bit of meta uh, a few days back. And while this is not my favorite meta game, and I think that's pretty much... Uh, I think I've repeated this numerous times at this point. I think there's uh, some fun to be made. And I want to showcase more unorthodox sort of strategies like this one. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the matches that I got for you today. And that's all I got to say. Thank you for watching. Have a soul day. Stay tuned for daily Legends of Runeterra content as I do post a new deck every single day. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.
All right, so all in fizz for our first opponent. I'm gonna drop uh, the progress thing. I'm gonna keep Heimerdinger with Flash of Brilliance, and we're gonna keep the Mystic Shot. Even though Mystic Shot is not really gonna be doing that much. Because it's a Fizz deck, right? And a lot. Of, another unit that I want to kill early on is the Starlit Seer, which has three health. So I, I could, you could argue for a Mulligan onto this. Not gonna lie, especially to search for like Assembly Bot, which is very difficult for this region combination to deal with. More so when they're facing our region combination, because we also. I mean. I don't remember if I if I do run a purify this list. If I do, it's maybe a one-off. Starless here goes down. I will go for the get set. Sorry, Fizz. I'm not gonna throw cards at you when you have mana open. That's just no bueno. We have to pass here. We have no early plays, unfortunately. What are the risks of keeping the Heimerdinger opener? But. I'm gonna discard one of the progress days as I already have Heimerdinger or double Heimerdinger rather in my opening hand. I don't need more card draw. Uh, I don't think this man runs anything to kill my Heimerdinger to begin with unless he yoinks me and he takes away a single combat. Like he, he doesn't really have anything. So I can just take a few hits early on and then I can drop Heimerdinger and uh, start generating turrets. I am open for the joink. I'm not even sure if these decks run joint to be honest, but... I'm actually gonna... I'm gonna throw a Mystic Shot in there. Just to take out a card. Basically trade this for a card in his end. I could, I could also thermo jack beam him, but I don't feel the need to. I, I want to make sure I have what seems to be the my donger play in effect. I want to wait for Lux as well. I also, because he went for bigger card there, like right now, even if he does have a Battle Fury, I survive. Unless he has that plus something else. I, I, I could have been open to a Battle Fury here. Everywhere I go, the light follows. But now I can play Lux, and now I can start getting proper value. Pushing my limits! Pushing my limits! <laughs> Up 12. This allows us to start forcing out more spells from him. Alright. Denied! Fortunately for us, this Fizz is still at range for our final spark, so we'll be continue we'll be able to continuously pressure it. I actually like the idea of Fort Demasa here. This is a pretty neat pool here. Provides me with a very nasty attack. That also gives me a tool to threaten Fizz. Okay. We were vulnerable to a Make It Rain, though. Ho! Huh. Ho! 
This also allows us to level up Heimerdinger, which is pretty relevant because of Make It Rain. Progress! Voice crack! Unfortunately, we are not out of range. I want to go for this now. Again, force something else out of him. All right. Who goes there? I can definitely trade you into you. I'm more than willing because you are a problem. I have another hammer thing in my hand anyways. Alright, just jump blocks. I can't really threaten Fizz with this turn. Uh, the frostbite didn't allow him to avoid a trade there. Alright, shady character. Not really much shady character is doing here, but my opponent's running out of gas. Fortunately, we do have blockers. Bless the lack of might in these two regions. Whew, all right. It's your boy. Behold. All right, so not much assembly bot going on here. <laughs> okay, you gotta be patient, right? I, I I have no control over the games I get. Hopefully, we get to showcase uh, assembly bot because right now I'm just showcasing the greatness of Heimerdinger, the tier one champion in Legends of Frontera, but with Demacia, because that that makes us somehow special. Let's go for a final spark. No. Cause he's not gonna be able to he's not gonna counter this one with just one card left in his hand. We're gonna play the Shredder. Which allows us to challenge that. And now are we looking at lethal here? 8, 10, 19, yes sir, we are. We just go for the open attack. We don't overthink here. If he has more harsh winds, stuff like that, that's fine. That's all fine. We have enough ways to generate elusive turrets because three mana plays are very, you know, easy to come by in this game. And uh, I think we can definitely expect a nerf to Heimerdinger in that sense. All right, go assembly bot! <laughs> and, and Heimerdinger. <laughs> yeah, even, but both of them contributed. All right, let's see. Uh, let's go for round two. Pepsi Cola. Ooh, this, this could be... Th this is probably just elusive aggro with Zed, right? Selenon is not bad. Um, I'm actually going to keep this hand, as weird as it seems. I'm gonna go for a thermo beam here. Just to prevent a little bit of, of damage there. Even though this does make us more vulnerable to a turn to Crimson Disciple. Hang on, but that's not the case. Worry about my answer both threats. Prevent any damage taken on early here. Ooh, this static shock would have been fantastic though. Just depressing. Victory at any cost. Let's take that. As much as it sucks.
<laughs> I'm just blasting everything. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. I'm throwing like everything but the kitchen sink at this man. And he just still keeps coming. Just throwing units. And I'm running out of gas. Ah, oh, jeez. Am I gonna have to... I feel like I'm gonna have to, like, get excited this. I'll trade the Relentless Pursuit. I'll try- I, I, I need to slow down this damage. And I need to draw into a Heimerdinger, an assembly bot, something. I need something. I, oh my god. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. If they don't break, they'll burn. Make the Empire proud. Oh man, I have two of these. That's brutal. I haven't drawn a single unit! I haven't drawn a single unit in this game, dude. The fuck? Come on. No! This is actually pretty bad. They picked the wrong row? My invitation is right. Oh no. <laughs> Damn! Four mana, two, two! With elusive OP. Oh, Jesus. Alright. Down to three we go. Down to one. For the glory of Noxus. My hand is totally not redundant at this point. Not at all. Wow. Now. Now you come serve me. Do not fear the shrouded path. I walk your path alone. Walk softly. Strike quickly. Fantastic. Well done. Crab it in. I, I, I could just, I can see it coming. I'm gonna read my comments like, Whoa, Miguel, if you would have brought a regular hybrid digger deck, maybe you would have done better. Fuck you, Timmy. Don't tell me what to do. All right, round three. Okay, Darius. All right, hopefully we actually draw units. Okay, I am a fan of assembly bot here. I'm gonna drop the map. I'm gonna keep the flash of brilliance though. All right, I like seeing that stand little in there as well. We just need to, you know, not get completely trampled from turn one. Okay, can, can we do that? No, there's too much to ask for. Too much to ask for. We got the chain vest. Not sure what the relevance is, but we have, I repeat, we have the chain vest. All right, goes for the attack. We're inside. I repeat, ladies and gentlemen, we are inside. Oh my god! It's Draven time. Can we win this race? May as well try, right? Okay, let, let, let's think here about how we're gonna approach this. If I can survive one more turn, I can definitely just live here. If I can put him on that clock, I go boom, I drop him down to 14, and then it's just an easy two hit kill. The question is, is there a way to do that on his turn? Seven, dropping them down to that. I'll go with this. This relentless pursuit could be lucky. 
basically elusives with a few extra steps because <laughs> we are very adamant on staying edgy it's just a matter of being able to survive this turn we have we have an extra proc for Let this me show you what I can do. I gotta go for this. This plays around the, uh... That's huge. That's huge. That's huge. We need to keep this Mystic Shot in case he has an auction Fervor. This will allow us to stay alive even against that. Next turn, as we attack, we have to run this Pursuit. Uh, what I'm worried about here... What I'm actually worried about here is a is a demolitionist but i i feel like if my opponent had that when i only had two meta left he would have like unless he top decked it here because right now i can i can attack and i can go for relentless pursuit for prismatic barrier and i can do the mystic shot as well so that would that would pump my attack up to total. That, that would enable lethal but that would leave me vulnerable to an action fervor so i'm gonna do this and this <laughs> Got him. You see, Timmy? Do you see? Assembly bot OP. Get good. Alright. <laughs> Assembly bot redeemed himself a little bit. I mean, to be fair, I drew him uh, in my first, like, 11 turns. I mean, I, it wasn't 11, right? It was like 6 or 7. Yeah, maybe, maybe I exaggerated a little bit there. Alright, anyways. Assembly bot is officially even. Let's go on to round four. All right. Same old foe, Darius Aggro here. We are, um, what is this? I'm sorry. Is that, is that the guy that I played? Did, did I play him earlier? Um, Darius, 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 Darius. Simply about this, even the map. I mean, honestly, like, we, we saw how crucial the map was there. This is... This can very easily be a race. So, having access to the Sunworks map for our assembly bot is pretty key, I think. I could go for the Thermogenic Beam. But I'd rather not. I'd rather have a uh, spell mana backup for this assembly bot here. We're going on. The chain vest really allows us to go heavy with trades. Ooh, we could we could very well see a we could very well see, like, if, if I go for a Thermogenic Beam here, we could see a Transfusion. And if that were to happen, we would be in trouble. But for two mana, I don't really see what else it could have. So I'm gonna go with Prismatic Barrier here. We could still have a Transfusion. Which would lead it to more damage, yeah, but at least... I put this at range of Mystic Shot, and, uh... Yeah, we draw into Relentless Pursuit again, which is really huge. My question is, is there a way for me to... I, I have a feeling... 
If I if I go for a double attack here, that's five. I just don't quite get him, to be honest. So I'd rather be more reactive with these options. I'm just gonna attack. For the Empire. Thanks, bro. The few for the many. He has an ox in fervor where we're put in a very precarious position. Um, if I go for a relentless pursuit now, the threat is just not there. It, it feels like we're just gonna lose this race, unfortunately. Maybe going for maybe, maybe using thermal beam on this earlier would have been better. No, because I I wouldn't have been able to keep up with this anyways. Yikes! 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 Uh, we can. What what is our best? Like what is our most likely odd of winning? It's hoping he doesn't have an oxygen fervor. If he has an oxygen fervor, he has everything. Like, I have to hope he doesn't have an oxygen fervor here. I have to go for the Mystic Shot. I have to start clearing his board. Like, it, it's really, it really is that simple. Unfortunately, Transfusion kind of does the same. And while we are inherently one turn away from killing him, he's going to take us down this turn. Uh, if it isn't with an open attack, I mean, if he plays Darius, no matter what happens here, I can't, I can't, I can't. Win. That's the problem with this sort of strategy, or like any sort of like you know wacky, relatively greedy strategy in this meta game. Uh, shit, shit's going really fast. Like, decks are just playing really fast, and games are ending a little bit too quickly for my taste. Uh, I'm not saying that my play pattern is healthy in any sort of way with this deck. Like, uh, what I'm trying to do against there is I'm trying to basically race them with an elusive unit that I'm pumping and then, like, you know, rallying with. Uh, that's not particularly, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, a healthy sort of strategy as well, but it's kind of like fight. You, you, you kind of have to, like, fight dirt with dirt, you know, if that makes any sense. Uh, we were a bit too slow that one though, so the, the combat tricks, like the transfusions with the Crimson Disciple, I, I, I definitely think it's about time Crimson Disciple receives a bit of a nerf, and I, I, I think that will that will definitely happen, which is unfortunate for other archetypes, but I, I, I think it's overall necessity, that's like she got, she got so much damage that game, so much value, alright, next round. All right, so from one one end of the spectrum to the other, we're going to the completely opposite archetype, which is control. And uh, we are going to... I'm going to drop Lux. I'm going to drop this entire hand, honestly. I'm going to search for Assembly Bot, Heimerdinger, stuff like that. Once you go beyond three emotes, you're getting a mute. <laughs> I ain't got time for this shit. Still see far and clear. Safeguard our homes. I'm gonna take this hit. For now, just in case of what I could draw here. I'm gonna play the uh the secession. the torches light the signal fires get rid of that bl uh, blocker right there with an attack I guess Brom could happen here I want to do this first. Okay. I was gonna say that um, I wanted to do that because I wanted to bait out a potential vile feast from him and then go for a chain vest. I'm gonna pass here. You can see the Nebastian border from here. As much as I like the progress day. I 
mean, thanks to that, we've we've enabled the. Forever watchful. What seems to be the problem? A world in perfect stillness. It's time for Lux. We can do this. I'm gonna do it like this. My my hand space was uh, a bit constrained there. Which is why I was I was like thinking so much. But now I'm able to apply a little bit of pressure. As he goes for that ruination, and um, Rom is on the job. why did I drop my my Lux? Oh, I, I I I I hit the wrong prismatic barrier. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem, man. Hello, hello, Kimberans. It was a bit of a cheeky attempt. Uh, yeah, I, I, I misclicked on the Lux there. And that's just def that's definitely a huge problem for us. You just gotta hope for no vengeance at this point. That's basically that's basically it. He's trying a lot. I have to hope for no vengeance here. We each die, then and also no no other Anivia. There's a lot of things I'm hoping for here, unfortunately. But 
this is basically my my game. <laughs> Alright, GG. <laughs> we had to try. Ah! Bit of, bit of a rough streak. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying... I'm trying to get this to work, but uh, not being able... I, I, I didn't feel like I had much of a chance in that matchup. To be fair, I, I, I don't think I drew too well. But I think also, like, getting rid of my Lux... Like, like I did, I, I, I think, I think that could have been like way more impactful than I, I'm giving it credit for initially. I, 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 I think that really could have cost me the game. All right, let's try again. All right. Good old Ash. Let's drop you. Let's drop you. Let's drop everything except for Flash of Brilliance. Because the Heimer dream is always there, right? Man, the, the nerf to standalone is... You can definitely... Like, I, I don't I don't miss the card, don't get me wrong. <laughs> like, I'm not against it. But you can definitely notice the... The impact it's had. I need just a moment. We have Static Shock. I could try to play assembly bot into a prismatic barrier, but I actually want to get no. I have this into shady character. Like I may as well start working for it, right? But it feels like such a. No, I think that's fine actually. Yes. As much as like Static Shock would have been a really good value play there. I, I, I have to set up my win condition as early as I can. Especially because I have Shady Character as well. So we can have, we can have some really good fun here. I just want my opponent to open himself up a little bit more because I don't want to... More about a... What am I worried about? A calling strike. Don't call you strike me. Okay, good, good, good. good, good, good. Calling strike is very scary, especially when, when paired with a. But now at least we have Heimer Dinger back up. Cool story, girl. What seems to be the problem? On the trail. I can take a hit here. Realistically speaking, I can take a hit. Calling strike, but he's using it on the hybrid thing or instead. We're gonna go for the thermal beam onto Ash. How many frost spice is that? Only two. Okay, we're very low though. We gotta be uh, pretty concerned about a potential Sidrani going down next turn, so we need to make sure that we're ready for it. This standalone doesn't really accomplish much. Who are you? Let's go for the shady character. He needs a two card combo. He has already revealed one calling strike, so he needs specifically a flash freeze and a calling strike here to stop this. Bam! Well, or he could just calling strike, you know, the shady character. That could have happened too, but we're 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 not. We're not, we're not we're not gonna think about that. We're not talking about that. All right.
We're gonna play around Reckoning. If we attack now, and he goes for a Reckoning with his remaining six mana, we basically lose the game. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ping uh, the Avaros and Trapper so that I can finish uh, both of these off with my Static Shock, which obviously means I'm not going to be attacking with my Assembly Boss this turn. I'm just gonna ping him with this. You earn the right to call themselves Trifarian. All right. There's a lot of spooky things here, like Kato the Arm. A chill in the air. As much as I would love this standalone, uh, I I need to make use of Lux here. Uh, the problem is I don't have the mana for for her anyways, so I, I may as well. I have to I have to rely on judgment, which makes things a little bit easier said than done. Not and ready. To no one. Right. In name. Never back down from what you believe. What's more likely? A Fury of the North? Or a Frostbite? A Frostbite, right? A Frostbite is more likely here. Just mathematically speaking, uh, or statistically speaking, rather. I mean, both. <laughs> uh, okay. Frostbites were more likely. So, Judgment would have been countered there. I do kind of just want to do this though. We're in this together. Save the host. Better, brighter than before. Bam. I get to do just enough damage. To Sejuani to eliminate her here. No more holding no back. More hold me back! <laughs> now we have the ability to protect this from Culling Strike if he did top deck it. And we have the Relentless Pursuit as well. We know what he's gonna draw. We know what he's drawing next turn. He's gonna be able to frostbite me next turn. If I if I go for a relentless pursuit now, it's only representing four damage. So there's no point there's no point in me doing anything but just passing and carrying over this mana. Ooh, double assembly bot, but it's a little bit too late for you. I gotta go for you. I gotta go for you. Oh baby. 
Oh, baby. <laughs> We're going in, baby. Because an arrow, like the crystal arrow, will only be able to frostbite one of these. So I may as well disperse. <laughs> Bam! attack get him down to two which leaves us with a nice sexy lethal here let's go for the uh, the final spark we got the lethal here with this I'm not sure I can stop a mystic shot lethal with this region combination but I don't know about you but I am not messing around with that no, sir. We're gonna threaten the most, you know, manly lethal first. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh yeah. Ooh, nice. Did we win? Yeah, we did, Lux. We did. <laughs> okay, this deck is this deck is like not amazing in this current meta game. Uh, it's all right, you know, like. It, it, it can definitely pull off wins, but it is unfortunately a little bit too slow. Like the fact that we, we man, if that Ash deck has like Crimson Disciple and shit, like we're, we're dead that game. That's the problem. This metagame is a little bit too quick for the strategy, which makes me sad. Because it's either that or, or hyper control decks that can, uh, you know, and standalone is just kind of, <laughs> this, this card is pretty garbage. <laughs> Like I, I can't even deny it, but it it does it does put in the work in some, certain scenarios, and it, it's kind of a necessity to get assembly bot to a respectable stat line, right? But it's very fun, man. Heimer Heimer Lux in general is just fun to play, and shady characters is just pretty awesome as well. So w when you do get the strategy rolling off, and it, it is a very rewarding deck. There's a lot of synergy. And it's just very fun to play, man. I, that's all I gotta. That's basically all I gotta say for this deck. Uh, don't really recommend it if you guys want to do some serious uh, climbing. Um, I'm getting a call right now, but uh, yeah, so that's the perfect moment to <laughs> to say it into this video. We've been at it for like wow, that's a pretty long uh, live session uh, for you guys today. But like I was saying, uh, just give me give me a second, bro. Like I was saying, uh, not the most competitive deck by any means, but fun. And there's some, you know, blowout potential in it. It's basically elusives with extra steps. But, yeah. At, at least it's cool elusives in a way. So, yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Hope you guys enjoyed the games. Hopefully you enjoyed the video as well. Have a swell day. Thank you for watching my content. Stay tuned for daily uploads on Legends of Frontera. Have a great one. And I'll see you guys around.